In this video, I wanna talk about a feature in N8N that I don't see too many people using, and that is the error path. So nearly every single node in N8N can break. For some reason, you know, maybe the data coming in isn't quite right, it's not structured, maybe you, you improperly wrote out the expression and so therefore it's an invalid syntax. But the, regardless of whatever the error is, errors happen in our workflows. And when those errors happen, we should account for what we want to have happen to that data that is passing through when the error happens. And I'll give you an example here. Here I have a, a little mini workflow that I pulled from one of my other workflows. And what it does is it's just an HTTP request node that pulls from a URL and it's looking for, in this case, it was looking for a sitemap. And if it does not find a sitemap, it's gonna error out because the URL that it's looking for is invalid. It just doesn't exist. And when it does not exist, the HTTP node breaks. It just, it errors, it says, oh, the whole workflow can't continue on, we need to stop. But that's not necessarily true because what we can do is we can come into the settings here, and if we come down to the section called on error, we have other options. So normally it's set to stop workflow and the whole workflow is just gonna end, and that's why your workflows just stop anytime that anything breaks. But you can have it just continue on. So as an example, for that particular item, it can just pass forward and say, oh, there was an error and no other data will pass forward. Or we can have this option here, which is continue using error output. And what that'll do is it'll have it create a separate, separate path, a second path called error that you can have items that error out go through and then have a separate process for them. So here, if uh, my sitemap candidate in this case, so I, I was trying like uh, dot or slash sitemap dot XML and you know pages dash sitemap dot XML and so on and so forth. I was trying all kinds of different options. The ones that are successful can come up here on this path and I mark them as valid. And then the ones that are errored out, I can mark as invalid. That way I can pass forward all of the information still with the information that this one errored out or this one went forward and it was successful and allow my workflows to continue. Or I can have this be like, uh, if it errors, I can send it to maybe a bug um, trigger. Um, um, that's not debug, I want um, error. Error trigger, not error trigger, stop an error. This is the one I want. So I can have it stop the workflow if it errors. I can have it send me an error message if it does that, um, rather than just erroring. So I can use a separate process for the error. Um, or I can just have an entirely different process entirely. So instead of merging them back together and continuing on the process, this could then go maybe to like a, a, a Google Sheets where it then makes a note, you know, no, we're not, we're not, uh, it wants me to add a trigger before I do anything. So we'll just add the trigger over here. That way it stops telling me I need to have a trigger. Then we do a sheets. Um, and then we do something like uh, an update row, wherever that is down here. And then this process would be its own process anytime there's an error. So that way I always have the data of what's going on in my workflow, what pieces of data, what items are passing through that are continuing on, which ones aren't continuing on. An example might be if I have a lead scraper that um, uh, the, the contact doesn't necessarily have all of the pieces of data that I want. Instead of just filtering it out and not doing with it, anything with it, I can set an error that, so it doesn't have everything it needs, it errored out because it doesn't. Uh, maybe if I was using like a code node, and then um, I then pass it forward into the back to the spreadsheet, letting it know, oh, I didn't have all the data I needed in order to be able to process that. So just a nice little um, option for you in case you weren't aware that you don't just have to have your workflow die every single time there's an error. Instead, you might be able to pick the node that you see the error happening over and over again, and then set up this error uh, path to then have a separate you know, uh, set of functionality that allows your workflow to continue and still let you know that there is an error. And if you think this is gonna be helpful for you, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like and share the video, it really does help. Looking to take your AI development further with more tutorials and free N8N workflows? Simply click the link in the description below to go to our free school community where you can find many more AI and N8N tutorials as well as all of our starter workflows that will allow you to start building AI tools directly into your business. And if you're serious about building AI automation tools into your business using N8N, be sure to check out our advanced community where we give new tools each week that will actually make a difference in your business. This is where we keep all of our exclusive tools and resources for committed business owners looking to ride this AI wave. In addition, you'll get direct access to me to help you through your setup and tech issues, 
our business building course library, and so much more. And as always, I'm Bradford Carlton. Let's automate your success together.